Good evening, everybody. Yesterday, we set up an AI, uh, well, not really an AI, we set up a Pi game environment to use OpenAI like a standard emulator with a keyboard and joystick mapping. Right now, I'm playing this with a joystick. Uh, it's not what we set out to do, but it's cool. I mean, it's the first steps of what we set out to do. In this episode, we're going to plug in some AI so I can finally fight my own, my own creation. Okay? So let's do that. Um, traditionally, what we would use is, uh, we, we like, uh, I personally like to use stable baselines. You could use just whatever the heck you want. I'm going to copy paste in the import statements because they're long and annoying. It's the same ones I use in every tutorial with stable baselines. Uh, the common policies, these are all the different policies you can use. We're going to use a CNN policy, or excuse me, we trained our AI with a CNN policy. So, uh, you know, we don't actually need it for this one. All we need to do is be able to load. But yeah, this is what I like. This is what I like to do. Uh, we're importing PPO2, even though we trained ours on ATC. There's no reason we don't need it. It's just part of the copy statement that I always use. Uh, additionally, we're going to call out the game. Uh, let's get this here. Call it game name. Game name equals that, so we can load it properly. Uh, the way it works with stable baselines is you need to load. Uh, so how do we do this? Model name equals I normally do. I just do it like this because I like to use different ones to test different ones. So in this case, it's A2C, but you can do whatever you want. You don't even have to do this if you don't want. The important part is that you have previously trained an AI to play Street Fighter single player, just on its own, not two player, just single player. Um, and you have copied that file into your the root folder of this here. Let me see if I can find that. So, okay, this is our folder, SF2. We got Adam Pizza in there. And we need the pickle file from when we previously trained using stable baselines, okay? So for me, this is called this. I don't know what you named it. Whatever you named it, you need the right thing. This, this is what you get when you, uh, if you follow my old tutorials on training F0 or Street Fighter 2 using stable baselines, you'll end up with a pickle file, PKL file, okay? Uh, we're not doing that this round. We've already trained it. So this round, we're just going to import it and use it. So model equals a to C dot load. It's this easy. It's legitimately this easy. Model name. Oops, not that. Excuse me. Model name. Okay, learn how to type. So that's this file right here. It's going to load this guy up. Um, and now things get a little bit goofy. Um, a lot of trial and error has led me to this position. We actually need to import another library. Uh, it's called Retro Wrapper. I don't normally use Retro Wrapper. It's a multi-threading. It basically puts each environment in a separate process. Because if you try and run two processes simultaneously, or two environments in the same process, it crashes. Right? You need to separate them. So we're going to use Retro Wrapper to do this. Um, We'll do that later, though. For now, let's just show you the AI running using our standard uh, standard stuff. So this one is not what we're going to use anymore. We're going to get rid of that guy. We're going to do env equals... Uh, actually, I'll just copy-paste this in. This function, whatever you trained your AI with, however you trained your AI, you need the same environment. Okay, so I previously trained my AI using subproc vec env. Uh, with, uh, I think I used four CPUs, but I, because I use subproc vec env, you have to continue to use that, okay? So it's the same, same thing. It's the same game right there. I can just get rid of this. Call it game name. Uh, oh. Using subproc vec env has some advantages you will see later on, okay? So this, this is creating an environment in the same way that it was created when we trained our A2C model. This is important, otherwise it won't load. It'll just give you an error. Uh, and then once you have an environment and the model loaded, you do model.set, excuse me, set env. 
and then the name of the environment. Okay. Um, and then, so right now we're using action array, which comes from our inputs, but we're going to do something else right now. We're going to go, uh, we'll call it, well, we'll call it action array. Why not? Action array equals model dot predict on OBS. There's actually two that come out of here, so we're just going to skip one of them. So the first one we're going to call action array, and we're going to feed that back in. So all of this stuff we did here is getting overwritten. Oh, we'll call it something else. We'll call it A, A2. Okay, A2. Um, so now, effectively, model.predict is taking the pickle file that we loaded, that's our brain, and we loaded it into an A2C model on a subproc vecenv of game name Street Fighter 2, and it's going to predict the actions for the step function uh, using the images OBS, okay? So our Ryu, when we're going to run this right now, and Ryu is going to play himself. It's actually the AI that we trained. It's going to take a little bit longer to start up because uh, it has to load up all the TensorFlow and stuff in the background. It's probably not going to work right away because I tend to screw up my programming, but if it does, hey, it's awesome. Oh, <laughs> uh, what, did, what, what, that's a silly error. What's the problem? There's OBS. Oh, right. Um, Hmm, yes. Uh, we are going to do it just kind of silly. <laughs> Give me a sec here. Okay, so sorry, the um, subproc vecenv, because I trained it with four CPUs originally, but now I'm only using it with one. If there was more, you would put them here. Uh, the... I actually need to refer to OBS, this OBS here, uh, as the first OBS, because technically it's a set of four in memory. Uh, so we're just going to do that real quick. We're going to say, this is temporary. We're not going to use this after this. We're going to remove this part. Uh, this is just to show you the AI working. We're going we're gonna to do something fancy in a sec, okay? So the problem was this window was trying to find, it, it's just goofed up. You got to use the first in this particular situation. This may or may not happen to you, so if this isn't happening to you, just move on. Um, but yeah, the problem was when I trained this model, uh, I used four subproc vecenvs. So there you go. So Ryu right now is being controlled by our AI. That's not me. That's just pure AI Ryu. Uh, I trained him, I, not for too long. This is a not the same one that beat the game before. This is just one I trained up real quick when I was messing around. But yeah. So there you go. He's kicking Guile's butt. Uh, that's us injecting our AI with some artificial intelligence, right? So now what we want to do is we need to set up two environments on top of each other. One is going to be our... Um, AI, and the other one is going to be us controlling one of the two characters, all right? So to do that, okay, first off, let's go back and get rid of this because we don't need this anymore because we're actually not going to show the environment. We're not going to use the images from the um, environment with uh, Ryu in it. We're going to use a separate one. This is where um, Retro Wrapper comes into it. So again, Retro Wrapper... Uh, divides environments out into separate processes. So we're going to say <laughs> we're going to change this to one, okay? Or we'll call it two, actually. Two set m 2 and this will be, we're going to use this one here, our zero n. Let's make sure we got all this right. So model that's back to normal. A2 here is being predict off model. This is N1. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Let's put all this together. 
this retro.make we're not going to use anymore. We're going to use retro wrapper, all right? Retro wrapper dot retro wrapper. This is the function you call for retro wrapper. And again, the whole point of this is we need a we need our two environments to run simultaneously. So we need to put them in separate processes. And I find the easiest way to do that is with retro wrapper because it's a pretty simple function. The problem with retro wrapper is remember if you remember in a couple episodes ago I mentioned how we couldn't just refer to ends.buttons or ends.buttons to get the buttons. Uh, retro wrapper doesn't extend that function. And then we're going to put it on two players. So this is the actual environment that we're going to interact with. It's two players. One of the players is me with my controller or my keypad or whatever. And the other one's going to be the uh, artificial intelligence. Okay, so when you set OpenAI Retro to use two players using this players function here, uh, it actually doubles the size of the action space. So normally with the Genesis it's 12. When you put it on two players it's 24 because there will be a total of 24 inputs, 12 for one player, another 12 for the other player. Uh, we're going to set the uh, output of the mobile, the model here, model.predict OBS. We're going to set this as one of the 12, and the other 12 come from our uh, Pi game event here. All right. So to do that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you have to do, you have to set the model.predict gives you a numpy array, which is useful, but numpy arrays are not the same as sets or lists. So the easiest way to do this is to go action array equals, um, who do you want to be num player one? I guess we'll do to list, I believe is how you do that. Let me just check that, that that's correct. Yep, to list, and then you can just add the other, oh yeah, this is action array. Just like that, okay? So, I should call this A1, or act, we'll call that act. And now, it should work. So let's see how she goes. So it's gonna load up, the uh, artificial intelligence should be player one, and I should be player two, so the AI should be Ryu, and I should be Guile. And I hope that it works. Nope! I made a mistake. It's players. Players equals two. Let's try that again. I like that it says hello from the Pi Game community every time. It's nice. Okay, so there you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Ryu is currently kicking my ass. That's my AI kicking my ass. I'm playing as Guile. I'm making him dance around like that. Uh, there, you, that's it. So now you can train up an AI separately and then load them in to this program and fight them. Woo! Oh, yeah. I don't actually know if I can beat him. I worked on. Oh, he beat me. <laughs> I'm not very good at video games. Um, in the uh, next episode, I'll show you how to jam two AIs together. Okay? And you can train them up separately. But that'll be next week. I'll talk to you guys later.